In this unit, we will see how we can combine commands together in order to control the flow of these commands. Specifically, we'll see how we can execute commands conditionally with an if or an else, and also how we can create loops to iterate over files or while a condition is true. The for command allows us to iterate over a set of values. In order to see the time in all three European cities of London, Paris and Madrid, I place them in a for loop. The syntax starts with the iteration statement. For i, in all these three time zones, do. Continues with the commands we specify, which in our case is to show time, the America Los Angeles time, 11.45, in the $i time zone, and concludes with a done. The i variable receives the values of London, then Paris, and lastly Madrid. I'm iterating with i through these values, and according to the output, when the time in LA is 11.45, in London it's 7.45 p.m., whereas in Paris and Madrid it's 8.45 p.m. Apart from simple for loops, we can also define nested for loops. For instance, to extend the previous example, we specify a set of time zones and then convert time between any pair of them. To do that, I firstly set a variable tzones to the time zones I'm interested in – Los Angeles, New York and London. Then I iterate through the values of tzones twice. The first for loop uses the time zones as input and stores them in tzin, while the second for loop has them stored as output in tzout. Using the function showtime, I now convert the time 11.45 for each tzin to each tzout. The result we see is a conversion of 11.45 between all time zones. The if command allows us to execute various other commands based on the result of a condition, the result of whether another command succeeded or not. As a demonstration, I create two files, the source file and the test file with a bit of delay, so that the test file is clearly more recent than the source file. To refresh a file based on another, for example to refresh the test file based on source file, I run. If test source file newer than test file, using the test command with the nt option to check whether the source file is newer than the test file. In case it is newer, source file is copied to the test file and I echo that the test file has been refreshed. Apparently, nothing happens because the source file is older than the test file and, as a result, the test file is not refreshed. To verify the opposite case, I recreate the source file to be newer than the test file and run the command again, this time using an alternative syntax for the test command, a set of square brackets. Again, I test whether the source file is newer than the test file and repeat the same copy and echo commands. We notice that the test file is actually refreshed this time because it is older than the source file. The if command can also be combined with an else case. In a similar example, I test whether the source file is newer than the test file and, after writing the same copy and echo commands, I add an else command. In case the condition is false, I echo that the test file is up to date. As expected, the test file is shown to be up to date. The while command allows us to iterate while a condition holds. Let's now write a small script that counts the average number of characters per line for all readable files in the etc. directory. First, I list the directory entries, redirecting the output of ls with a pipe to a while loop. While takes as an argument another command, read, in order to read the input directory entries line by line. Each file name is stored in a variable called name. Then, for each file name, I test with an if command if it is a regular readable file, passing the "-f option to check if it's a regular file, 
the minus a option for AND and the minus R option to check if it's readable. In case the entry is an actual file and not a directory and is readable, I display the file name without a new line by passing the minus N option to echo. Next, I run the export command to calculate the average number of characters per line in the particular file. Specifically, I count the characters of the file using wc-c and the file as input, along with the number of its lines using wc-l and divide the two. I complete the if command with fi and the while loop with done and pipe the output to head to see the first few lines. The xargs command is a magnificent tool for working with huge datasets. The command reads data from its standard input and then supplies them as arguments to a specified command that it executes. It is needed because the operating system provides only a fixed amount of space for providing arguments to a command. xargs overcomes this limit by executing the command repeatedly with new batches of arguments chunked from its input. Consider as an example that we want to find how many lines exist in all files under a specific directory, in my case the current directory. I run the find command in the current directory, specifying with minus type f that I'm interested in files, and then apply cut through xargs on all files in order to concatenate the files together. Finally, I pipe the output of the wc-l command to count the number of lines. Find doesn't always work as expected with xargs. For instance, let's say I want to find the oldest file of the directory program files on a Windows machine. To do that, I run find for program files and type file I apply stat to get a modification time of these files, sort through the output numerically, and display the oldest file using head minus one. But instead of the oldest file, we get various errors saying cannot find application or verifier. The problem here is that the output of find contains some lines with spaces because on the Windows system, file names often have their words separated by space. Since xargs uses both a new line and a space to break up its arguments, some file names containing spaces are incorrectly broken apart, leading to the creation and display of non-existing files. To get around this, find offers the option minus print zero, which separates the output elements using a null character instead of a new line, based on the fact that there are no nulls in file names. The output of find is then piped to xargs using a minus zero option to specify that the input is separated by null characters rather than new lines or spaces. Again, I output the modification time and the name of each file, sorting the results numerically and retrieving the oldest file, which is the license file of GSView. By listing the file, we verify that it was created 20 years ago in the year 2000. The case command allows us to run a specific command based on pattern matching. To see this in action, I create some command aliases that depend on the operating system I currently run. These are useful to make our commands work independently of the system we use. The uname command displays the name of the current operating system, which in my case is Linux. With a case statement, I use the output of uname and then insert an in and some patterns that specify what happens depending on the value of uname. In case of Linux, I create a command alias s which starts a document using gnome open. Then I create a second alias cpt that copies the current directory to the clipboard using pwd to print the current directory, a pipe, and xcell minus minus clipboard. With a double semicolon, I end the first case. I then start another one for Darwin, which is the output of your name on an Apple macOS machine. Similarly, the alias S is set to open here, 
where CPT is set to PWD pipe PB copy. On the SIGWIN, Unix-like environment for Windows, the aliases vary accordingly. Finally, after ending the case command, I run alias and verify that the aliases CPT and S correspond to the Linux case. So, CPT contains PWD pipe Excel, while S is set to GNOME Open. This concludes our Foundations unit on execution control. Stay with us.